Hi there and welcome. Today we are taking a look at the Memo Tech MTX512 and uh, this is my all time favorite computer. Not only is it absolutely gorgeous, but it's also really well made. The Memo Tech is from the early 80s, maybe one or two years after the Sinclair ZX Spectrum and it was not really competing with the low cost machines because it was really expensive. But uh, you got a lot for the money. First of all, the enclosure is a aluminium enclosure, not some cheap plastic junk. And also the keyboard is really, really nice. Generally, the, the quality of the machine is just outstanding. The plugs on the back are real connectors. There are no gold fingers or other cheap junk in this machine. Everything is really, really well made. The one I have here, I got it some years back and it's working except for the keyboard and um, we'll try and repair that today. The specifications for this machine is um, quite decent uh, as it is. It's a Z80 machine using a Zilog Z80 running at 4 MHz. It has a separate graphics chip uh, from Texas Instruments and it has a 64 kilobyte of RAM. The video output is 40 by uh, 25 characters, which is uh, nice for a color TV. And uh, because of the expansion capabilities, it is actually able to run a CPM operating system. For the CPM operating system, you need an additional uh, box that connects through the expansion slot at the back. And the box has a, a 80 characters card, which is required for the uh, CPM operating system. So using that card you will have uh, 80 by 25 characters uh, on a real monitor and uh, these are of course just uh, black and green for the CPM operating system. But right out of the box it has uh, lots of colors. Also there are additional uh, memory expansions possible. There's a card for serial communications and networking and um, yeah all around it's just an amazing machine. Okay, and I set it up and uh, you can see the screen here from the Memotech. The problem that I have is that the top row of the keyboard seems to uh, misfunction. It looks like on the top row the, the keys are grouped together two by two. So one, two. See, instead of two it presses two and three. So it looks like the keys two and three are somehow mapped together. If I press three alone, it just gives me a three. When I press a 4, I get a 5. When I press a 5, I get a 5. When I press a 6, I get an H7. When I press a 7, I get a 7. When I press an 8, I get a 0, 9. When I press a 9, I get a 9. So half the keys on the top keyboard are not really working. The fault is either the keyboard itself or the chip that interfaces the keyboard to the data bus and onto the Z80 CPU. So this should be a really simple repair job. I'll just open it up and take a look at the interface chip and uh, probably just swap it out and uh, then we'll see how it works then. The Mimotech have a 74LS273 chip uh, which is an output chip and uh, the output port each of them can be set as a 1 or a 0. And um, uh, the input is a 74LS244, it's, it's just a basic uh, tri-state buffer. And basically the keyboard itself is just arranged as a cross matrix. And uh, there are basically eight lines that can be programmed to either one or zero uh, using the output chip. And uh, there are eight columns that can be read. So if we look at a single switch, this is one junction in the cross matrix. And in each junction there's basically just a button. The row and the column can be shorted out when you press a button. If we just take a look at the circuit diagram again, each of these columns has pull up resistors on it. So if nothing is pushed, if no button is pressed and none of these little junctions here are shorted, we will just read all ones. So how you scan the keyboard is that in turn you take one of these lines low. So if we start for instance by the top one here, we pull that low and uh, someone has shorted a button here. This bit here, this line here will be then pulled low. So you, in this case, when there's a button connected here, someone pushed the button here and this one is low. This line will be low down here and the other ones will be higher. Like that. 
and the software in the memo tape will just scan these one by one all the way down so you can read one uh, row at a time here just by pulling them low one by one and uh, that's basically what's happening here so my best guess is uh, the reason this is not working is uh, this chip or that chip has some problems I am not really convinced that uh, the keyboard matrix in itself has any problems because uh, these are just mechanical parts and it's very unlikely that uh, every second button are shorted together so probably uh, there's something wrong maybe two of these are kind of shorted together up here uh, or there's something wrong with the chip okay and I got it opened and uh, here we have it in all its glory and basically what we see is everything is on a single PCB uh, if we just run through all the chips down here we have the Z80 CPU then above it we have a Zilog CTC which is a programmable timer and uh, this is typically used for internal timing uh, and also for reading joysticks and stuff like that then above the CPU and the CTC we have a PAL which is the only programmable device in this machine PAL is basically a, a small programmable logic device and uh, this PAL is generating the row and address strobe signals for the dynamic RAM and we don't have to go into that in detail right now uh, because this kind of RAM chip is kind of obsolete now so um, uh, above that we have some uh, logic gates and down here we have all the RAM below that we have the clock oscillator circuit and uh, there's a little budge resistor here I think uh, next to that we have the Texas Instruments graphics controller chip this is a TMS 99 series uh, controller and uh, it has its own little clock down here and it has its own RAM up here as well next to that we have the basic operating system and uh, these are in mask ROM um, on top of that we have a little PCB here and this PCB is basically the video output circuit and uh, Mimotech made two different kinds they made one for PAL which is used in Europe and uh, then they used uh, and then they have another one for NTSC for the United States on top of that there's an Aztec modulator it exists in two different uh, sizes and the small one was just video out only and this one which is a slightly bigger one also has a circuit for making the audio sub carrier so there would be audio out through the video connector apart from that there's a little cable here which goes to a connector here for audio out and uh, then we have the power input and down below here there are three voltage regulators and uh, there's even a little fuse here which is a nice touch and next to that I have one expansion board which is a memory board and as you can see these are just kind of snap in and uh, it slides in a, in a guide here in the aluminium and uh, you can just add more here and uh, if we just zoom in up here we have the keyboard connector uh, which is this one here and it has uh, eight outputs and eight inputs just like I explained in the in the drawing earlier then it has all the eight diodes and it has the pull out resistors here um, then we have the 74LS244 and the 74LS273 uh, these chips are not burnt 100% at least if they have a problem uh, because otherwise the, the data bus or the address bus on the CPU would be shorted and the CPU would not be able to run okay and uh, I have now wired everything up and now I'll be taking the output from the output chip the 74LS273 okay so we'll just check the first one and that looks pretty good um, it's reading about 2000 times per second it says it's 2.19 kilohertz and uh, it just bleeps for a few uh, microseconds the second row is being read more often for some reason the, re the next row is not reading anything whatsoever and uh, I'm not sure whether this is correct or not it could depend on the keyboard of course maybe that row is not working or not being used so we can't really tell whether that's correct or not the next one also looks good the next one likewise the next one likewise the next one likewise and the last one looks weird uh, but uh, yeah could be okay I think this chip is working but I'm not really sure so I will swap it out got the keyboard out of the enclosure I got it out so I could fix this uh, semicolon key and I just cleaned it up a little bit and uh, 
now it seems to be working really well. So the only problem I have is the top row here that I need to fix. Okay, yeah, so I've uh, been to the electronics shop and I uh, got some new TTL gate. And I don't really have the correct tool for this job. So I'll do the second best thing and that is I'll just cut off all the legs on the IC on both sides and remove the IC and then I can desolder and pull out the pins one by one. Because otherwise um, I worry I'll uh, destroy the PCB. And yeah, so I'll just uh, start it and uh, I'll see you again when I'm done. Okay, and I've now removed the chip and just gonna clean it up a little bit and then I will solder in a new one. And uh, my mind was kind of split whether I should um, put it in a socket so that it doesn't look original or just solder in the chip uh, directly and um, I decided to go for a socket okay I'm back and I've uh, soldered in the socket all that's left to do now is just insert the chip okay so now I'm hand holding the camera and I hope it's not going to be too shaky the enclosure is used as a heatsink, so uh, the voltage regulator is just sitting on a small piece of aluminium right now. So I can't keep it on for too long. But it should be enough to just try out the keyboard. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And yep, it's working. Super. So uh, I'll just... I'll just screw it together and... Uh, I got myself a working Memotech uh, MTX512 again. So cool. And uh, maybe I'll just write my little Hello World program. Print. Hello World. Exclamation mark. Oh. Burp. Enter. 220 go to 10. Yep, and we run it. Hello world! And uh, as you can see, the keyboard is now working. So, yeah, I got myself a fully working Memotech MTX512. My favorite computer of all times. So yeah, that's it right now, and uh, I'll see you again later.